please welcome to this uh, session on uh, Eurovision, Stockholm Show the Way to Eurovision in Malmo, or maybe Loreen really showed the way to Eurovision to Sweden, anyway. Uh, so that I need to speak in the microphone, although we are not that many here, uh, so that my colleague, who is in Malmo, head of relations of Eurovision, can be with us and hear what we are talking about. But first, just a little introduction to this year's Eurovision. Because when we when we put the conference there last year, we were really keen on showing uh, uh, Malmo to, to the rest of Europe, and and uh, and that's the same theater where we choose that city again uh, for the Eurovision Song Contest. And you care? What would you say about choosing Malmo? Uh, because there's a theme on the Eurovision that you have on on the programming for last year, right? Yes, it was diversity, multiculture. Malmö is a very special 
city, it's the third biggest city in Sweden. It, uh, there's a lot of immigrants coming to Malmö. We have uh, 170 different nationalities, something like that, in Malmö. And uh, Eurovision is also about diversity. So it's, uh, we will hear our CEO talk about this later on. Yes, I think we will hear her actually right now. Our CEO, Eva Hamilton, uh, we have a little clip on. Because it was, it was not uh, the obvious uh, decision to put Eurovision Song Contest in the third biggest city. Why not in Stockholm, the big capital? Let's hear uh, our CEO, Director General, Eva Hamilton. Eva Hamilton, the CEO of, of Swedish Broadcasting Corporation. Um, when you got the opportunity to arrange this year's Eurovision Song Contest, you made it somehow different. Explain. We choose Malmö. It's the third biggest city in Sweden, although it's I mean, in, in a European third. It's it's a very big town. Uh, I think there are like 300,000, 400,000 inhabitants. Uh, it's a town in the southern part of Sweden. It's close to Copenhagen of Denmark. It's a very expanding area, and it's an area where there has been quite a lot of social problems lately. Um, when we decided to uh, have the big event there, a big party there, uh, there were several reasons. Uh, one reason was money, purely money, because it's much, much cheaper to do it in London. Uh, the second reason is that we are, Swedish television is Swedish television. We are the television of Sweden. And to stay in Stockholm all the time gives the wrong symbol, it gives the wrong impression. Just to say that we are in another town, we're in your town, was such a strong thing to do. And thirdly, uh, in Malmö it's going to be very, very evident that we're there. It's going to be the entire town will be painted in the Eurovision Song Contest colors and symbols. Nobody who passes the town of Malmö will miss that we are there. In Stockholm, it would be something, you know, there are so many events going on all the time, it wouldn't be that evident. But since uh, CT is such a rich company and, uh, and uh, uh, wasn't there a, a, a will to overtrump the uh, final in Baku, you could have made, you could have made a, a a spectacular event, an even bigger party if you if you'd been in the capital, but but instead you chose to go to the region. Uh, isn't it just um, isn't uh, Eurovision Song Contest all about the extravaganza? Uh, it's going to be a very spectacular event, uh, a very spectacular event. We're doing we're trying to do it more to create relations. Uh, I mean, we are not going to show postcards of the touristic Sweden, you know, with the castles or whatever that usually is, is shown. Uh, we're going to try to explain every artist, why is she or he here? What made this person, this girl from Poland, becoming the national artist coming to Malmö? We're going to meet her mother, her, or, you know, her manager, her house, uh, her sister and brothers, just to make a relation between the artists and the, the viewers. Uh, so that is one thing. Uh, I also know that the um, uh, we're going to have the ABBA, you know, the, everybody knows the ABBA, ABBA and the Avicii, which is the hottest uh, musician in, in Europe right now. They're going to create the opening number. Uh, I mean, there are so many things that I know is going to be very, very spectacular. Um, the thing of being in a very, very big arena doesn't make the TV program, the show, a better one. Just this lots and lots of people and you need lots and lots of lamps and lots and lots of, of lightning and of, of um, sound uh, boxes. It doesn't make the program better. We're going to do the best program for Europe. And do you think that this will change how other people do the song contest in the future? I hope and that also even you has been very or is very grateful for us trying to cut costs because it must be possible for a small democratic country to be host of the Eurovision Song Contest. It can't be something only for dictators who want to manifest their own um, power and um, progressiveness or whatever they're trying to manifest. 
uh, we're trying to take it back to its roots. This is something on being together. This is something that Europe, Europe is one. And I think we'll be able to do that. Mm. That is actually something. Best Eurovision ever, says our CEO. How do you feel about that? And what? I, like our CEO says, uh, best Eurovision ever. Yes. So, how do you feel about that? The pressure on your shoulders? Yes, it's quite, quite a pressure, but, but uh, uh, a lot of us are into competitions and, uh, and of course we want to win, so we, we will surely try to do the best Eurovision ever. Uh, not the largest, uh, but the best. And we are really into content and, and what um, the CEO just said, uh, smaller doesn't mean uh, that it's going to be uh, less experienced or less spectacular, uh, the other way around actually, uh, we will. I just put a picture up on the screen here saying Malmö, perfect reflection of Europe, 160 nationalities, daily integration, a city of transformation. In what way is Malmö, in your eyes, the best location for the Eurovision Fund Company? And how will you use this? Yes, we, we believe that Malmö is uh, some kind of a mini Europe. And, and we believe that this show is actually uh, not about showing uh, Sweden to the rest of Europe. It's, it's more like uh, actually celebrate diversity in Europe. And therefore, we think that Malmö is the perfect place to be. Okay. It's also taking Eurovision back to its roots and making it, um, Eva Hamilton said, we made it, one of the reasons is money. We want to make a spectacular event and uh, it mustn't cost too much. Is it possible? Um, how we managed? Uh, how we managed? Yeah. Um, actually, we, we have done some, uh, together with the ABU, we, we've uh, shortened the rehearsal schedule a bit uh, because it's both expensive for the host as well as for the participants. Uh, and of course, we are trying to um, use our TV skills to produce it uh, and to, to put in a lot of content, not, not just more technique and uh, more lamps, as uh, Eva said. Um, we are trying to tell stories and use our TV skills, so, so maybe we could, uh, or we will, cut some uh, costs. Uh, on the other hand, it will be one of the most uh, spectacular shows that has ever been shown, so but, uh, some smartness from the technique uh, guys actually. So cutting the cost is on the technique and not on the content. Um, no. Right. Um, I know you have, we can go on to the next picture, some um, uh, uh, unleash the full potential of the Eurovision Song Contest. It's from your PowerPoint, so uh, what is the potential of Eurovision Song Contest? Um, the lights go off it. Uh, uh, actually, that is about uh, going back to the origin, going back to what we call the European ID, to tell, to tell the story of a program that has been shown for decades. And um, from the beginning, it, it actually was uh, the technique who made it possible to, to the whole of Europe to watch the same program, have a party together and to, to really create kind of togetherness. And uh, we really want to go there and, and, and therefore show each and every country uh, Eva told us about the participation. And we want to make uh, the viewers curious about other countries, not just Sweden. So, so uh, and we believe that the story that has been told hasn't been used. So we are talking about going back to the future, going back to the original ID and put it in, in this year's context, actually. So modern, but an old ID. Yeah, and we have the core values you uh, have, create real curiosity, create wow moments, create true relationships and create passion that lasts. That mm -hmm. are your core values. 
Yes. Which one of those has been the most difficult to stick to? Uh, I have all been rather easy to stick to. Uh, the fashion is uh, possible to measure uh, afterwards. Uh, and of course, the wow moments, it's hard to, to really tell how wow it will be. Uh, most of us uh, remember when, when the host dropped her skirt back in 1985. And that was a real wow moment. And um, I believe that we have some of them, but uh, I cannot tell because they won't be wow then. But you, you given us, or Eva gave us an uh, opening with the ABBA and the Vichy, so we, there's, there's a potential in that, I think, also. Uh, definitely, uh, it's going to be great to, to show Europe that the, it will be some kind of uh, Eurovision um, theme, actually. And uh, I think it's amazing to put, put um, uh, parts from ABBA together with Avicii. And, and let them meet up in the European Union. That, that is a wow, actually. So what, are the, what have been your biggest challenges uh, during uh, this time you've been working with this project? Because you're just about to get to the final now. What has been the biggest challenges to, throughout the world? Um, first of all, there is a Bible. Um, and we and, and but the biggest challenge is the time. Actually, we have uh, a year to create uh, the world's biggest entertainment program, and uh, we will produce um, a little bit more than seven hours of uh, direct broadcasting and live broadcasting, and that is a challenge. Actually, uh, I spoke the other day to Martin Green, who who uh, was producing the the London. Um, live broadcasting, the opening and the ending of it, and, and we had five years. So, of course, this time is really challenging. But uh, that's all we have, so we have, we have to do it, but it's pressing. Oops, we got some extra sounds from here. We will... That's okay. Um, uh, the, way, the way you'll be working, I and mean, Eva said in the uh, uh, our general director in a short clip that uh, one of the ideas is also to get back to the, and you mentioned it, to the artists. And there's quite a few artists that you want to come close to and get to know their mothers and, and managers. So uh, that mm -hmm. must have been quite a task to um, quite a few. How many entries do you have? Uh, 39. 39. Yes, yeah. And some of them are big divas in their countries. Or it, it, it has been really easy. There, have, there has been 14 traveling around Europe meeting up with the artists and it has done really, really well actually. And, and, and it's, it's sort of new actually that they will have an extra air uh, space. So, so all of them are really happy actually. Okay. And the fun part, uh, for you and as head of relations, which has been your the funniest part you've asked through? The funniest part is actually to plan everything and, and to go from a paper product into building it up in the city uh, and, and uh, watch it actually grow. And right now we're in the middle of it, just living it, and that is so great. There are some two producers here watching you right now, although you can't see them. Uh, but uh, on this journey you've made with Eurovision this last year, is there something that you really feel that you've learned that you want to share with these people? Um, it's 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 not you know, like, um, uh, The recruiting is the most essential to really pick the people. Um, that you know are good and that you like and that you really want to, to work with actually because uh, when the time is uh, running really fast you have to be around people that 
you you can trust and that you can have fun with actually I, I believe that uh, right now we are you know, uh, uh, under uh, pressure and we really have to stop and, and, and laugh a couple of times each and every day but the recruitment side of it is actually the most important do we have any questions to crystal from the audience yes, yes. Well I, I well, I suppose you're going to try it. Can she hear me from here? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose the, that the, the global uh, emission is uh, going to be composed of many hours. And uh, as, a, as far as I, as I see, uh, there is going to be uh, an approach to the participants. So, is there any relationship with the national channels in, in Eurovision so that they can uh, uh, contribute with some images or is your, your channel making all the production for these, let's say, interviews with the participants? I don't know if the question is clear enough. I, mean, I, I do understand. Is there any all the background material that is being shown, okay. is it made in-house by SVT or are we collaborating with other colleagues in other parts of Europe? Um, no, we have been, uh, we, um, uh, have been co-working with production companies, uh, but they are Swedish. So we've been traveling around, uh, yeah. uh, if that was a question. Yeah. Did I answer it? Yes, you did, I think. Yes. Any other question? Would you just stay on a bit, Crystal, and uh, we'll talk to Pan, who's the uh, head of the uh, regional station in Malmo Regional News. How has Eurovision affected your daily work? Well, a lot, actually. I get calls from back home now. They are worried, how will this go? Uh, in the SVT, the regions cover uh, their own regions for the national news. So we are working, my team, we are working now uh, with the responsibility to cover this for even the national news. So it's, uh, we have uh, extra people coming down from Stockholm, but it's a lot to do, uh, really. And we're planning, uh, we're planning on uh, focusing on our broadcast uh, prime time news. We're going to be broadcasting live from different places in Malmö next week, every day. Uh, we have produced, we are producing a documentary. Uh, it's called "What If Bonnie Tyler Wears a Fur." It's uh, Bonnie Tyler is coming here, and uh, we are following uh, volunteers. They are working. There are people with roots from different countries in Europe. Ordinary citizens of Malmo. They are working as volunteers, uh, being hosts for the delegations. So we are doing a documentary about that. Let's see a little clip from that documentary. Yeah. You will, uh, in the beginning, you, there is uh, a casting. They are speaking Swedish, all these people, but they have their roots in other countries.
monetize it, where is it firm? <laughs> We're doing this to show Malmö, the multicultural Malmö. And we're broadcasting this uh, two weeks after, after the great show. So we, uh, we, will, uh, we have done half of the documentary before and we will uh, film half of it during the next week. That's a great pair, but uh, can you tell us a little bit more, you were into this, but uh, the discussions you've had uh, regarding covering the Eurovision in your newsrooms, has it been very easy, uh, the coverage, or uh, has there been some discussions about it? I mean, it's a huge event. Yeah, it's uh, several, we have uh, several discussions. One is... Uh, how much should the news do about this? Uh, isn't it just uh, entertainment? But it's affecting Malmö very much, it's affecting Sweden, so we are doing a lot also in the national news. The national news show Good Morning Sweden is coming down, broadcasting live in Malmö. Uh, we, uh, we also we have a dip discussion within the company what shall the news do and what shall the entertainment department do? So we are we're quite, we're working in separate, uh, quite separate. We don't want to mix the two. We are going to have a, a different view on things. We're going to cover, there will be a demonstration next week because of, uh, well, Israel is participating. We have a lot of uh, Palestinians in Malmö, so there will be things going on. Uh, we also have a discussion how will we address this Eurovision. It's, it's a problem for SVT. We are an independent, non-commercial public service. And here there is a lot of sponsoring in this, but that's something the EBU, EBU says it has to be so. So we have done some stories about this. Uh, the Grand Prix winner, they, had, they, they made a story about corruption in, and bribes in Telia's and Era. Telia is the main sponsor for this Eurovision. So it's, but we, have, uh, we have told these stories. You've told stories also about uh, the car company. Yeah, there's a car company, Subaru. They are sponsoring with uh, 50 cars painted in, uh, in the, with this butterfly. And, and used by the people working with the Eurovision. But SVT is not sponsored <laughs> taking this money. It's going through you, give you or the society. There's a lot of money put in from uh, Malmö and the region. Three billion, three million euros something. So, Crystal maybe can say something about this. I'd say that, uh, Crystal, if when you, you know, the two departments and uh, the critical view and the investigative journalism of the secret and the news department, do you find it, do you find, how do you find it, how do you cope with that, balance it? Um, I think it's absolutely necessary that we uh, separate the news from the entertainment show. So. Uh, but of course, I would like to, to, you know, tell exactly how it works and uh, get my point of view out. And but it doesn't always work like that. Um, I don't think it's the time or the place to discuss the uh, that there is an agreement and there is a financial model for for this. What exactly what Pat said, uh, which comes with the show actually, and. Um, event suppliers by cars um, is not to SPT, it's for the region that is going to take care of all the transportation issues uh, and so on. But I believe uh, for certain that, that uh, SPT news has to, to tell all the stories about Eurovision from all angles. Sometimes we don't uh, uh, I think it's very uh, happy, and we're not very happy about it, but I think it's crucial that we work that way in, in our company. So, 
uh, as well come that. I'm sure you do. I mean, we are an independent, as you say, public service broadcaster, and we really have to, to be able to even scrutinize our own company sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. Um, per, um, um, or Crystal, um, you left Malmö the other day, you're in Malmö now. How would you say, is Malmö painted in the uh, butterflies and uh, the Eurovision colors, or has it, uh, are you waiting for the explosion? Actually, you cannot come. You cannot come to Malmo not noticing uh, that there is Eurovision in town. They have, uh, together with us, the, the city and the region, uh, really uh, been able to create that Eurovision bubble that I dreamt of when I started working with this. Yes, there is butterflies all over the city, and we have this green color. Uh, we call it peacock green and, uh, on. Everywhere you look, you cannot take two steps without have the feeling that Eurovision has landed, and that is really great. And that is possible because it is a smaller city. Uh, we have had uh, the Olympics in Ilham as a role model for this to create that uh, warm atmosphere and, and a total awareness of the event in the city of Malmo. So, yes. Tomorrow night, so I'll see some of it for myself, uh, hopefully. Uh, Per, uh, would you say something about what has been the most challenging thing about Eurovision for, from your point of view? Oh. I think yeah, that's what's coming next week. We have been planning as much as we can with our resources and uh, we'll see what happens next week when everybody wants the piece of the cake and we are uh, serving the cake. <laughs> <laughs> serving the cake to whole Sweden, whole yeah, Swedish yeah. Everybody's going to call, call us, maybe from Norway and Denmark and other countries too. They want to have an interview with their something. There, it will be a, a lot of things to do next week. Will you be having extra news coverage even on the evenings? No, we have, uh, we have uh, in the evening, we have 11 regions in uh, Sweden. And we broadcast 19 different programs. Uh, and that's 15 minutes, it's the quarter past, quarter past seven in the evening. And uh, followed by uh, the national news program, Rapport. And in this quarter of an hour, we're going to uh, focus about six, seven minutes live broadcasting from different places. Uh, there are a party going on, a party going on in the whole city. The biggest square will be, there will be entertainment all day long, and they are on several places. We need them there. So that's what we are focusing on. Online as well, I think. Online, we have uh, a lot of people coming down, also from uh, Stockholm, and we are. We have. There's a problem for us all broadcasters that when we create an event, uh, millions, hundred and twenty million viewers watch that. When we create an event, others kidnap the event, and we're uh, after a lot of it's a uh, name. Paper. They are the biggest on the web in Sweden. They will do a lot of things on the web for people to have as a second screen during uh, the show, during the whole week. So we don't want them to kidnap this event. But that's uh, so we have to work good hard on online. But there is also the entertainment department working with this. So. How do you make sure, Crystal, that uh, our biggest evening newspaper online doesn't kidnap our event and make the second screen their screen? Uh, actually, I cannot really prevent that. Um, uh, we are doing as much as we can for, for the online and for the second screen as, uh, as well. But uh, the ones that uh, Pat talked about, I know that they have 17 co uh, workers um, on site in, in Malmö, and that is really large for, for, for a newspaper. So, uh, 
uh, we just have to be creative and, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, win a second screen competition, but actually um, we just have to do better. We will find out next week who is the second screen number one in London. Uh, actually, uh, is there any questions for Pal or for Crystal? Yes, Fernando? Um, well, I'm glad, I'm glad to know that being the host of a circle conference leads to great events. I don't think we will host the Universal Show Congress next year, <laughs> especially because we are not EU members for the moment. Uh, but I took good notice of the, the, being the host and arranging the, the having in charge uh, of uh, being in charge of the arrangements of the conference leads you to personal pro promotion. I see. So very good for me to know. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to know how many uh, workers are involved in this uh, organization and internal workers from SVT and external. More or less. Do you know that, Crystal? The, uh, the question from Fernando, uh, who is uh, how many this conference, this year's conference, was uh, how many work, how many has been working with the event with Eurovision for uh, what, preparing and, and the whole the whole event. Uh, all together, around three thousand people. And that is uh, from the, the region of Skåne, from Malmö, from SVT, from uh, another production companies. Uh, uh, in, in the production, the TV production, uh, around 800. 800 for the TV production. And you're talking about 3,000 for how many, how long time? I mean, how many hours? Maybe. Um, I, I say uh, the, la uh, the last 10 days, the 10 days of the event, 3,000. And before that, before you're planning on um, we, we were four of us a very long time, and then from September, it just started to grow. Mm -hmm. So, so you and, four of you, and then from September, it short, it's slowly growing until uh, the very uh, massive uh, yes. last weeks. Only the volunteers were 400. Four hundred volunteers. Sorry? That that is not enough. Five hundred and seventy volunteers. Okay. Mm. So quite a lot of people are involved in this. What's the budget? I work. And what's the budget? What's uh, how many? Um, from from, from uh, the TV production, it's one hundred and twenty-five million Swedish kronas. So this includes the time of the of these people. I mean, uh, there is an estimation of the cost per hour of these people. People working with the Eurovision, which is actually one big, big part. I mean, so depending on what what level of salary you have in your country, of course, that's also something you have to consider when you talk about money. Yes. It's more more interesting, I think, to talk about the hours put into the project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are only 2,100 people working within SCT as a whole, in the whole country. Mm. So, 2,100. 200. 2,200. Everybody's not working with this. No, it's volunteers from <laughs> city. It's volunteers and production yeah. companies and quite a lot of uh, external partners, right? How many from yes. SCT? And if you would say from SVT, Crystal, how many have been working? Oh, approximately. Oh no, that, that's really hard to, to 60, 50, 60, something like that. So the large amount of people from outside SVT. Yes. And in how much time are you organizing the event and um, being a news channel uh, covering it? Excuse me, I didn't really... It's a Eurovision, Eurovision uh, contest. Uh, you have the EBU. How much time is... Are you organizing it? And how much time are you... Uh, 
uh, covering it. I mean, there's two different things, I think. Yeah. Yes, but we, we, have, we have two se separate uh, divisions within SUT. Crystal is now working for the non not news division. I'm working for the news division. So Crystal is talking about her division. When it comes to the news, uh, we are not... This is a big event, but it's not huge for the news division. No. We're planning it quite good, but it's not, uh, not, it's not bigger than uh, Olympics or something for us. It's much, much smaller. For us it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have, we could say, uh, we have three factories. The, the, the organization of Swedish television, and one is uh, producing news and sports, and the other one is producing everything that is not news and sports, and then there's a small one producing online specialities. So uh, that's a very good way of separating the two, I think, in this way. And of course, uh, it's a lot bigger in the entertainment factory. Right. I mean, it is the large pro in the world when it comes to, to entertainment. Yes. <laughs> but you all yes. That. So don't feel, don't feel the pressure, Crystal. <laughs> we'll all be watching you next week. Will you be watching? How many of you are watching? I don't think so. I don't know. Now even more. Maybe the live tweet. I always watch the Eurovision. You always? I always. I, yeah? yeah. I have a question. <laughs> The 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 is not doing it. The director of the show. It is. Sure, it is. But, but we're talking everybody at the same time. The director of the show is from SVT or is it external? It's, it's always important to have a good director. Yeah. Did you important? understand? Did you hear the question, Crystal? No. Who is the director of the show? Is it a, a person from Swedish television or is it someone we have? The, the show producer is Kista Bjorkman. Who is also producing what we uh, in Sweden call Melody Festival, the national selections. Yeah, but for producing it? He's producing it. Technically, in the control room. Technically, uh, it's um, head of production is Johan Bernhagen. He usually works with sports. And technical operating manager is Ulla Melski. But he has done, I think this is his 11th. Uh, Eurovision, but he's Swedish. We actually, uh, we've had quite a good reputation on that side, so we have been helping out in the Olympics and as well in, in other countries' Eurovisions. So I think in, within the company we can manage. Any more questions? Yes? Well, well, <laughs> sort of sociological question. As far as I see, the Eurovision feeling is higher in Sweden than the average of Europe. Is there any reason for this? Uh, maybe the other uh, success uh, is uh, affecting this feeling in the Swedish nationals? Who will answer that one? It's just a curiosity. I, I, I think that... Uh, yeah. can, you, can you sum it up? I can sum it up. Uh, there is a huge feeling for Eurovision in Sweden, and it's bigger in Sweden than in many other countries. And the question was, why do we think it is such a big thing in Sweden? It is a huge event in many countries, but really Sweden is one of the one of the fans of Eurovision. And and also, we we have been broadcasting the national selections for decades, actually, and that has become. Uh, more than a TV show, it has become um, almost like spring. Uh, I mean, um, like Christmas Eve for many for many people, and still is um, a program that uh, um, you 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 invite people home to watch television together, and so so I believe strong uh, um, Eurovision is larger and more popular in the countries that. And broadcast the national elections. I think that is. Uh, of the Don't you think also the success of changing it from being just one show on television to making it the whole country, of taking it out so that the national selection is done in different cities every year, and it's even a big news which cities will be hosting the yeah. national selection 
uh, every year and the cities actually compete about because to them it's very important and we have almost all suites watching SVT for these different national uh, selections, right? And, and, and of course when, when uh, we each and every year in those national selection produces and releases 32 new songs that immediately at least 75% um, uh, of them uh, goes uh, directly into all those lists and you can hear them on radio and people, people uh, play the, the songs. It's almost uh, uh, impossible to, to release an, uh, a record or, or a movie during this time because it's occupied by, by the national selection songs. And that is also uh, part of the success story. You said 1,000 journalists came to your press conference. Or what? No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, approximately 1,000 uh, media journalists entered the press center today. Where and there are about seven, eight hundred more to come. Where do they come from? That is, uh, that shows they, they where the interest is the largest. I, I think it's around 60 nationalities for the moment. They're, they're from Australia, uh, Syria, Brazil, and of course all the participating countries. But it's, it's huge. And uh, the EBU announced today that uh, China is going to, to broadcast the event as well. China. Oh, so, uh, what kind of audience are you expecting on the final? Uh, what kind of audience where? In viewers? Viewers, viewers. Oh, yes, yes. How many? many? How many? Uh, actually, I don't know. It's, uh, the number we've heard is 120 million viewers. Uh, but when, when China born, maybe. Very nice. Fernando. Yes, I don't know if Crystal knows this, the answer to this question because it has to do with funding. How? Uh, what's the, the percentage of coverage of the sponsor of the, uh, to the total amount of the uh, cost of the event? Mm -hmm. And the other part, supported by the um, SVT, comes from um, SVT uh, license fee, or is there another way? That's the only way we have money. There's no other way in. Mm -hmm. License fee. Um, mm -hmm. but, but did you understand the question from Fernando? Yes, I believe so. And, and I'm sorry, I, I won't be able to, to give you an answer because I'm, I, I'm not uh, head of the economics. And, and sending partners and uh, um, uh, the international sponsors, I, I, I actually don't know how uh, the model of financing is between uh, if you and the host broadcasting and uh, the, the host uh, broadcast actually. So I don't, I don't have that, just, just to give you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I have one little clip left for you because uh, uh, this is uh, the Eurovision and I hope you will be watching it next week. And who will win, Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, um, it's rather open this year. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that Denmark is a favorite, but I think it's, um, it's an open competition. Uh, and I don't have a favorite yet. <laughs> oh, okay, so you have to ask me that question. Thank you very much for joining us from Malmö. I know you're really, really busy, and I wish you the best of luck for this week, coming week. And we hope it will turn out to be the success our CEO expected to be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very, very thank you very much, and don't forget to watch. <laughs> <laughs>
in fact, you will see on telly, it's from a production company, but still they have created quite a lot of work in Vancouver to produce the things that you don't see in the TV show. So let's hear from Vancouver how you can use it. Låttext har oftast 
kortare rad än strofer. Så jag lägger en Morrissey-text till Every Day is like Sunday. Och ett tag så var det att den kom med på fyra ställen i katalogen. <laughs> Men det är så. Jag är fisk. Nej. Vad ska se en gång nu? Just det, jag kan berätta. Ja. Ja.